Sonography of the urinary tract. The technique, normal appearance and variations. This part will cover the kidney and the renal pelvis. Now basic technique for renal ultrasound. The position of the patient can be supine, decupitus, one of the decupitus, prone and uh, position allowing optimal visualization has to be used and at times uh, to see one kidney more than one position may be necessary. Approach can be a subcostal uh, approach or it can be an intercostal approach and uh, usually done with a deep suspended inspiration to bring down the kidney below the ribs. The planes used are the sagittal coronal transverse. So the longitudinal scan is either sagittal or coronal and then the transverse scan. The sweep, sagittal or coronal sweep and transverse sweep has to be done to assess the whole volume of the kidney. So the protocol, this is the schematic and of the uh, sagittal scan and the sweep by moving side to side. It can be a coronal scan as the longitudinal scan with a sweep anteroposterior. And then the axial scan or transverse scan which can be subcostal or from the flank and move up uh, and down for the sweep about downwards. So the technique involves a longitudinal scan which can be a sagittal or coronal as shown here and a transverse scan either from the subcostal anterior or from the right flank and the longitudinal sweep has to be made if it is sagittal side to side or it is coronal anteroposterior and a transverse sweep above downwards. So this is the longitudinal scan of the kidney and either sagittal or coronal and the transverse scan of the kidney which can be taken from the anterior subcostal or from the right flank. To get the uh, longitudinal axis of the kidney, now this is a coronal scan and uh, when you attempt to take a coronal scan, you get a scan of the oblique scan of the kidney as seen here. So then from there you rotate the probe in a, or swivel the probe like that to get at the long axis of the kidney. So the, you have to swivel either way. So you will get long axis. Again if you swivel then it will again become oblique. So you come back to the longest axis of the kidney. So that is the video of the technique oblique then swivel to get the long axis of the kidney. If you still further rotate it will become again oblique. So get back to the long axis of the kidney. Here it is a coronal scan. So once you get the longest axis here the coronal scan then you move up anterior and posterior to get the sweep of the entire volume of the kidney in the coronal or sagittal scan. Then rotate the probe 90 degrees to get the short axis or the transverse axis of the kidney as shown in the video. Once you get the uh, transverse axis, now here on the mannequin you see from the flank but the image video is from the anterior aspect. So either way you go above downwards to uh, in the transverse axis to scan the entire volume of the kidney. So the kidney has to be uh, entire volume of the kidney should be scanned in two planes either coronal or sagittal and transverse. Now this is the sagittal scan from the anterior subcostal approach and you see the right kidney posterior to the liver. So when you see when you get such an image now this is the uh, sagittal scan of the right kidney uh, from the anterior aspect and uh, the, you see the liver and the right kidney. The kidney is bean shaped and you see a perinephric fat line all around the kidney which has uh, five structures namely the renal capsule, perinephric pad of fat, gyrotus fascia, parietal peritoneum, Morrison's pouch 
and visceral peritoneum and the liver capsule. So this is the uh, structures you see you get within this uh, thin perinephric fat line. Then you see the parenchyma. The parenchyma is uniform in thickness all round and the medullary pyramids within the parenchyma and then you see the central echogenic area. So the central echogenic area as the name implies it is the echogenic area in the center of the kidney and um, it has uh, the pelvic cell system, renal artery branches, renal vein branches, lymphatics and sinus fat all of these within this uh, small area because of the interfaces between each of them it appears echogenic that's why it's called central echogenic area then you see the adrenal area that is uh, adrenal above the upper pole of the right kidney and the normal adrenal we don't visualize an ultrasound in the adults then we come the longitudinals can be a coronal scan as shown here and the coronal scan uh, appears like this on the uh, schematic and the difference between sagittal and coronal this is sagittal scan this is coronal scan shown here for comparison what is the difference so in the coronal scan taken from the right flag you see the kidney and uh, you the orientation becomes little uh, different because we place the probe in the flank near the transducer it is lateral relationship and the opposite is medial and because the probe mark is here it is the cephalic and the opposite is caudal so from the lateral abdominal wall you see that is the lateral abdominal wall then you see the liver medial to the lateral abdominal wall then you see the right kidney medial to the right lateral aspect of the right, right lobe of the liver and then you see the psoas muscle medial to the right kidney and then the lateral surface of the vertebra seen as a white light with shadow. So because the probe mark is here then this is um, the cephalic so which is the upper pole towards the head end is the upper pole. So that is the upper pole and above the upper pole we get the adrenal area and uh, that is the lower pole and you see that the uh, lower pole is actually in the upper part of the image but the, the orientation is it is lateral so the lower pole is more laterally placed than the upper pole that is normal that is because of the psoas becoming bulky lower down it is thin near the upper pole and becomes bulky so it takes the lower pole more lateral than the upper pole so that is the normal orientation of the kidney and uh, that is the psoas marked by the triangle. Now coming to the difference between sagittal and coronal, you see the kidney, the sagittal section is taken like that and so the, you see the parenchyma all round whereas coronal scan is taken in this plane as shown in the schematic and the parenchyma there is a discontinuity in the medial aspect because of the escape of the vascular pedicle. So the, uh, that is the discontinuity in the, of the parenchyma medially. So you see that the ec central echogenic area is uh, continuous with the perinephric fat or retroperitoneal fat and the hilum. That is that differentiate this from the sagittal scan. So as a result when you get a section, sagittal section like that, the kidney looks uh, as the uh, image shows with parenchyma all round but when you take a coronal scan of the kidney it looks uh, this, like this uh, seen in this schematic where the parenchyma is all round except the, the renal hilum so that is the central echogenic area continuous with the retroperitoneal fat so that is because the collecting system and the vessels escape uh, reach the retroperitoneum through the hilum so when you see the collecting system these are the calices communicate with the renal pelvis and the continuous as the ureter so that is the calices renal pelvis and uh, continuous as the ureter now these are seen when the collecting system is dilated when there is obstruction but because the uh, collecting system uh, is collapsed with no fluid in between it cannot be made out normally so as a result to see the, the, the collecting system the coronal scan is crucial. So the significance of some certain diagnosis are 
uh, section specific so they will be seen only on a particular section here we will see how the coronal scan is significant now here you see an image of the kidney in the sagittal scan where you see multiple cysts in the a kidney so it mimics a multicystic kidney but when you do a coronal scan you see that the typical appearance of hydra the peripheral dilated peripheral calyces communicating with the, the more dilated medially placed large renal pelvis so making a diagnosis of hydronephrosis so you see how crucial the coronal scan is we'll see another example here again there are multiple cysts of varying size uh, typical of multicystic kidney and in coronal scan also uh, it remains as multiple cysts uh, non communicating cysts of varying size so typical of multicystic kidney another example here you see the kidney in the lower half of the kidney you see multiple cysts but when you do a coronal scan you see that the upper half of the kidney is normal whereas in the lower half you see the peripheral dilated calyces communicating with the medially placed renal pelvis and continues as the ureter so that makes the diagnosis of adenophrosis of the lower moiety in a double collecting system with the upper moiety being normal so here again this diagnosis is possible only on a coronal scan a few more examples of um, the significance of coronal scan here this is a sagittal scan of a kidney showing a cyst in the upper pole in the sagittal scan but when you do a coronal scan you see that it is not a cyst it is the dilated uh, upper moiety of a double collecting system which continues as a ureter down so then it is diagnosed this double collecting system with the hydronephrosis of the upper moiety another uh, example you see uh, a small cyst in the upper pole of the right kidney and when you do a uh, coronal scan you see that it is continuous is huge dilated ureter making a uh, asymmetrical double collecting system of the kidney with a small upper moiety with hydronephrosis and dilated ureter now here you see a sagittal scan the kidney absolutely looks normal but when you do a coronal scan you see that there is uh, similar to here you see a double collecting system with asymmetrically small upper moiety with dilated uh, collecting system continues as the uh, dilated ureter so again here it is a double collecting system with hydronephrosis of the upper moiety these are examples of the significance of a coronal scan few more examples now coronal scan why it is important we'll see here the kidney sagittal scan looks normal but when you do a coronal scan you see even though the kidney looks normal you see a calculus medial to it so this is because of a non dilated renal pelvis with a calculus at the pug so this calculus is missed on the sagittal scan and uh, here you see hydronephrosis of the kidney and you see the renal pelvis and as if the renal pelvis is um, ending blindly without dilatation of the ureter may making a diagnosis of pug obstruction but when you do tilt the probe in a coronal plane anteriorly you see that the pelvis is continuing as a dilated ureter and which bends and turns upwards which is very characteristic of an upturned per ureter of retrocaval ureter a very classical finding this is a c horse sign then we come to the transverse scan now the transverse scan as i said can be taken from the anterior aspect or from the flank so this is from the anterior aspect can of the kidney the same patient you see from the flank you get the transverse scan of the kidney so it can be done anteriorly or from the flank now when you see the transverse scan of the kidney and the gall bladder you see the liver you see the gall bladder and then you see the right kidney with the perinephric fat line the parenchyma the pyramids the central echogenic area extending continuous with the retroperitoneal echogenic area the inferior vena cava head of pancreas and the antrum of the duodenum these are the structures in relation to the right kidney now as i said certain diagnosis or uh, uh, section specific so certain diagnosis will be obvious in a transverse scan now here 
this is the coronal scan you see a calculus in the lower pole and when you do a coronal scan you see a cyst in left lateral decubitus position you see in fact that there is a cyst in the lower pole with a fluid fluid level indicating that it is milk of calcium within a cyst an entirely different diagnosis which does not need any intervention while a diagnosis of calculus will need an intervention to remove it that is about the right kidney and uh, coming to the left kidney the protocol is a coronal scan of the left flank uh, which is done like this in this in the schematic and you see the coronal scan of the scan image and sagittal scan of the left kidney is not obtainable in most situations because of gas in the uh, stomach prevents visualization of the left kidney from anterior aspect so most of the times you take a coronal scan from the left flank so here again the relationship is lateral median uh, upper uh, cephalic and caudal and uh, you see the lateral abdominal wall and uh, the image is similar to coronal scan of the right kidney but the structures are different so instead of right lobe of liver we see the spleen instead of right kidney you get the left kidney instead of right psoas you get the left psoas and in, instead of right lateral surface of the vertebra you get the left lateral surface of the vertebra casting a shadow and protocol for each organ you have seen in the basics it should cover a sweep of minimum two planes and to cover the entire volume of the kidney so first get at the long axis make a long axis sweep from side to side then turn 90 degrees rotation to the short axis and then move up down to cover the entire volume of the kidney so at least in two planes we should do that so then we come to the uh, real time observation in the uh, technique and protocol so we have to observe the movement of the kidney with respiration which is uh, even though the kidney is in retroperitoneal structure we see the movement of the kidney uh, with respiration and the liver also moves uh, with respiration but uh, many times you will appreciate a differential movement a sliding movement of the liver over the kidney as seen here but um, it is brought out with a forced movement as seen in this image uh, in this video you see that the liver slides over the right kidney so these are two important observations um, in the movement of the kidney which is uh, which will, the importance of which will be illustrated in the normal section in which is uh, the, the movement will be restricted when there is uh, inflammation and adherence of the kidney to surrounding structures either by infection or infiltration now coming to the echogenicity of the renal parenchyma this is the relative echogenicity of the different structures in the abdomen kidney is uh, less echogenic than spleen and liver spleen is less echogenic than liver and then pancreas uh, the liver and spleen are less echogenic than pancreas which is less echogenic than the retroperitoneal fat so that is the relative echogenicity now coming to the kidney what are the normal uh, parameters to look for you have to look for all these uh, parameters we will see one by one now normal appearance the size the length of the kidney is uh, varies from 9 to 12 centimeters with 4 to 5 centimeters and the parenchymal thickness 2.5 to 3 centimeters the left kidney is slightly larger compared to the right kidney so how is the kidney measured measured the you take the longest axis of the kidney and take the uh, measurement to uh, from pole to pole the renal length um, correlates best with the body weight decreases with advancing age lesser in females vary with the state of uh, to some extent with the state of hydration and there is an increase slight increase in the length with the pregnancy now there can be error in renal measurement and the source of error is one is how it is measured so this is an oblique scan of the right kidney and uh, even though the, the section will look the same but the measurement is will be less as shown in this illustration so when you take the longest axis it will look longer so how to avoid uh, this uh, error a trick is to get the longest bipolar length by real time ultrasound by a vertical swivel of the probe as i have described uh, earlier in the earlier part of the lecture so here you see oblique scan 
the kidney looks uh, normal morphologically but the length is only 9.6 whereas when you rotate the probe and get the longest axis it is actually 10.9 so if you don't do this then you will by mistake make a shorter length of the kidney so how to do that you get a long axis of the kidney i have described earlier so get at the coronal scan it is you get oblique scan then rotate the probe to get the long axis of the kidney then measure and other sources of error in the renal measurements on the lower pole of the kidney obscured by bowel gas and you, you get a smaller length and to avoid that you must avoid the gas and get the longest axis of the kidney and the parenchymal thickness is uniform around the kidney and the, the you should see the clear margins of the kidney like that all around you must be clearly seeing to avoid mistakes in measurement and avoid missing a pathology now coming to the contour of the kidney it is smooth and harmonious it is convex uh, laterally anteriorly and posteriorly and concave medially that is the hilum of the kidney and uh, coming to the parenchyma parenchyma is uh, contains both cortex and medulla the medulla is seen as triangular equipoor structure pyramids in the parenchyma which is more medial than the cortex and the echogenistic gradient as said earlier uh, the cortex is equipoor less echogenic than the liver adjacent liver spleen and uh, cortex is more echogenic compared to the medullary pyramids so we assume that liver and spleen are normal before you come to a conclusion and then there is a difference between the cortical echogenicity and the medullary pyramids so that is called the cortico medullary differentiation which is uh, again has to be looked for to rule out some pathology of the kidney and the parenchyma ring is all round seen all round except at the hilum as shown here then we come to the central echogenic area it's um, the contents which has been described earlier you see a prominent or large sinus in obesity because of more fat steroid therapy and sinus lipomatosis you see a thin sinus thin uh, central echogenic area in the neonates as seen here and in cachexia and when there is parenchymal swelling and compression of the central echogenic area which happens abnormally when there is parenchymal edema or infiltration this is an example of acute pyelonephritis causing compression of the central echogenic area even lymphomatous infiltration of the parenchyma will produce the same effect then we come to the perinephric fat line describe the contents of this uh, thin white line and uh, this may not be made out in a normal patient but when there is abnormality when there is uh, fluid collection the layers will be seen separately as seen here the renal capsule the perinephric fat of fat the gyrotus fascia and the parietal uh, peritoneum and uh, morrison's pouch with fluid in it in the form of ascites and then the liver capsule so all are made out in this a uh, case of uh, viral hemorrhagic fever where there is fluid in between the layers perinephric <clears throat> fat line uh, where it is usually thin and echogenic but it can be thick and echogenic because of uh, fat fat uh, the echogenicity of fat varies depending on the location and content and the content of uh, fibrous tissue so here it appears echogenic in the, in this patient it looks echopoor so it can be thick echopoor fat also can be seen This is the normal variation. The position of the kidney is uh, in supine. It extends from T12 to L3, the left kidney. Right kidney is slightly inferior to the left kidney by about one to two centimeters, and uh, there is uh, little mobility with the change in position. Maybe in erect, it will come down a little. A uh, mobility with respiration. Normal appearance of the kidney is different in the neonate. where uh, the cortex is hyperechoic compared to the liver and uh, uh, this hyperechoic uh, becomes hypoechoic by about 3 months and in premature uh, infants uh, the echogenicity is more and the medulla is strikingly echopoor may mimic this in the neonate and uh, there are contour lobulations uh, which is normal and uh, the central echogenic area is thin because of uh, very thin fat uh, in the 
uh, neonates. The renal length in neonate is ranges from 3 to 5 centimeters. And there are a nomogram of the pediatric uh, kidney length and uh, width uh, available. Now, there are some anatomic variants, normal variants, which can be mal rotation, fetal lobulations, parenchymal junctional defect, hypertrophic column of Bertin, and dromedary hump, extra renal pelvis. Now, here mal rotation we see in sagittal scan you see the renal hilum anteriorly instead of being uh, medially it is anterior so here normal the hilum in a sagittal scan hilum is not seen because it is medial but here in the mal rotated kidney you see anteriorly and uh, in the transverse scan again you see the hilum anteriorly normally it should be medial as seen here so this is a mal rotated kidney right kidney and uh, persistent fetal lobulation which we saw in the uh, neonate can persist so these are renal lobules in nuclei begin to fuse in late second trimester to yield a progressively smooth contour sometimes this fusion could be incomplete and contour shows small indentations which is intermedullary there is no parenchymal thinning so the contour shows um, small indentations which is intermedullary between the medullary pyramids and the parenchyma remains uh, thick there is no parenchymal thinning to differ to differentiate it from a scar there is a normal variation uh, in the form of parenchymal junctional defect which is seen as a thin echogenic line from perinephric fat to renal extending from perinephric fat to renal sinus between upper and mid third junction more commoner in the right side than the left kidney and um, differential diagnosis is a parenchymal scar how to differentiate it, the differentiation is in the the contour defect is acute versus obtuse in in uh, junctional defect it is acute like this whereas in the parenchymal scar it is obtuse like that and uh, the calicial blunting underlying calyx is normal here but there will be blunting of the calyx in a parenchymal scar hypertrophic column of Bertin you see is a normal variation you see that uh, there is um, parenchymal indentation on the renal central echogenic area laterally and uh, uh, the junction of upper and mid third junction and the, the, that will be continuous with the adjacent cortex as seen here and it will contain the normal morphology containing renal pyramids as seen here and it will be less than 3 centimeters in size and there will not be any contour change in the kidney. So that is the hypertrophic column of Bertin. In contrast, here also you see a similar appearance, but um, only thing is the morphology is different, and uh, it can be a TCC. Though so difficult to uh, differentiate sometimes. And uh, the another normal variation is dromedary hump, as shown here in the schematic. The hump on the left kidney convexity. It is a contour adaptation to the spleen and the differential diagnosis will be a mass. So how it is differentiated? The parenchymal thickness is maintained as shown in the schematic diagram. You see the and contains normal renal pyramids. Whereas if it is a mass, it will not be, the renal pyramids will not be there. And vasculature, they will be normal in the hump, whereas in the mass, it will be splayed. So here you see the parenchymal thickness maintained in hump whereas it is lost in and the mass. Normal pyramids are seen in the normal hump whereas it is absent in the mass. Then central echogenic area, the most important structure as we have seen is the pelvic lacial system. So when you, in normally the pelvic lacial system remains collapsed so it cannot be visualized normally. So when you see like this we assume that the pelvic lacial system is normal whereas if it is dilated then the central echogenic area will be splayed by the dilated collecting system as seen in the sagittal scan and in coronal scan you will see the make of the calyces communicating with the medial pelvis so that is the dilatation of the collecting system and in the central echogenic area may be enlarged and uh, this may be normal uh, due to sinus lipomatosis or it can be abnormal as seen here there is fluid between 
indicating that there are multiple polypoid masses. In coronal scan, you see the mass extending into the ureter. It can be a blood clot or a sloughed papilla or fungus ball or a papillary TCC. Here, this turned out to be papillary TCC. So, all this appearance can be produced by all these conditions. Then we come to the extrarenal pelvis, which is a normal uh, variation where the renal pelvis is uh, mainly extrarenal in location and because there is no support of parenchyma, it is baggy. So this has to be recognized and it is appreciated in transverse scan and uh, you see the extrarenal pelvis with thickening of the wall and you see PUG obstruction with a huge dilated extrarenal pelvis whereas the calyces are not much dilated because the pressure is taken by the extrarenal pelvis. Thank you very much for your attention.